Oh, not a lot in the first week because we didn't have a lot of players here, so that's how it is. We had a couple of players who had to, to train, obviously, but more in the medical department than, than with us. So we had a couple of days off. That was good, obviously, but um, it's not that we, especially from a coaching point of view, that we needed it. We only had it. So that's how it is, and then you have to make the best of it. That's how we always do. Um, but the most tricky moments are always the games the boys have to play, and that looks this time... Um, I think it's the first time, but pretty much everybody came back healthy. <laughs> uh, that's good. So we, since yesterday, we have them all together. Um, the Brazilians obviously came a bit later, and, and Bobby and um, Ali did a bit less yesterday. Sorry, um, but um, today it was still a good session yesterday with all of them, and today another session, tomorrow another session, and then we had three together. I don't think Tottenham have uh, had more. Um, and so that's the situation now. Let's play the game. And because you had Mo Hamad Salah probably for the first time in a while on an international week as well, has he benefited from that? Oh, 100%. Of course, if you gain freshness in that period, in that time, that's clear. The boys, they have, if they have if they have off a day off, they never have a day off, actually. They always train, but just individual. And that's, um, of course, but it's not the highest intensity, so that helps. For different reasons, of course, not only for Mo, it was um, for the others as well. Like this, um, was not involved in international duties, so um, no, all good, all good. And as far as Tottenham is concerned this weekend, sometimes this this break can take away momentum. But given that they haven't won in their last four Premier League matches, that they may have appreciated they've got the new ground to look forward to now that they've seen that. And I think they're exciting times for Tottenham. So now I saw only pictures of it, but it looks. Pretty impressive, um, and um, so they obviously can look forward to that. Um, yeah, but after Tottenham played the last game three weeks ago, I don't think anybody feels any defeat from last week, uh, from from three weeks ago. So that we expect the strongest Tottenham you can expect because they, I think, heard nothing about uh, any injury problems or whatever. They had a few over the over the over the, over the season, but um, not in the moment. So there will be a. A, a strong side here, a, a world-class team will be here, and um, yeah, we could see even without preparing the game what we did now in the last week, of course. But um, before that, we saw the Champions League games, we saw we saw Tottenham playing, so it's a very, very good football team. Unfortunately, very good. Yeah, just any further injury updates as, as regards specific players? Jurgen, um, obviously Joe Gomez, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Jack Grealish, Harry Kane as well. Yeah, yesterday we were all in training. Um, for 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 it was for all three pretty much the first, the first full session. So we have to see how they react. Um, it was was um, was actually no alternative to for Paul Schack and 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 um, Trent. They're not being involved in in the, in the games in that period. Anything else would have been really crazy because um, they needed that. Uh, they needed the treatment. They needed uh, the rehab and all that stuff. And Joe, yeah. Joe was back yesterday um, after 15 weeks. Oh, what a long time, eh? But um, yeah, yes, it looked really good. Looked really good. But of course, yeah, early stages. Yeah, he's really now uh, adapting again to to proper football training after having obviously thousands of um, rehab sessions. And um, so that's they are all. They should be all okay. Nothing. I heard nothing different from uh, this morning since I'm here. So they should be okay and train again today, and then we will see. Um, yeah, Ox, I have, how can I say that? I think one of the biggest mistakes I made here was um, being so excited about having Ox back. Not because it's not exciting having Ox back, it's very exciting, but everybody, the, the spot was on the game, a derby, a U23 game, was pretty rare. And I'm pretty sure Ox felt a little bit before the, the after the last session with us, and then he played the game, and then he felt a little bit more. So when everybody was looking at it, so now we keep him a little bit in the shadow. It's, he's in a good moment. He will train, and when he, when, he, when he's back and when he's ready to be properly back, then I will inform you. Until then, I will not speak about Ox. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, um, this weekend the Premier League uh, launched the No Room for Racism initiative, and just given what's gone in the past week, and also what's happened in English football as well. What do you feel are now appropriate punishments, be it UEFA, the FA, Premier League, can hand out 
to try and deter people from racially abusing players within the stadium? I don't know what about what, what to say about that really because it's, I'm so disappointed that in our world this in this moment now well that something like this is still possible that people still do that they use their their voice for the completely wrong things it's so it's so frustrating I, I can't believe I, I I watched the England game but without sound so and I was surprised when Hendo got the yellow card when 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 Rose got the yellow card when when um, Raheem celebrating in front of us for crowd. I said, hey, what's going on there? When I heard afterwards, it makes all sense then from one second to another. So I really think it's we, we it's not allowed to ignore it. We have to put the finger, we have to speak loud about it, we have to we have to finish that finally that people really are not allowed and who is doing it because it's not even it's maybe some guys are shouting and think it's funny it's not funny it's it's a opposite side it's very difficult for me to to really feel the situation of Raheem of 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 um, Rose or of other players of our players who, who get faced or face something like that uh, because I never had a situation like that but it's um, whatever I could do I would I would do um, and we have to Stop games. We have to do everything. I understand that Gareth didn't do it and didn't say come on off the pitch stuff like that. So, we, but we have to make proper. We have to make clear that's not allowed and that's not possible. And um, yeah, each punishment, from my point of view, um, is pretty much allowed. There were a couple of incidents now in the last few weeks. Eh? Not only racism, other silly situations, running on the pitch, stuff like that. That's all. It's not fun, and we have to make clear that's not fun. So stop it. I don't think I, I would do it. I'm not, I don't know. It's really difficult for me to hear it in a, to hear things like that in a stadium. You'll probably see it in a moment if it's one guy or two guys or whatever. If it's a, the whole um, stand, then it's then I would do it. Yeah, one hundred percent. If the whole stand is, is is the same opinion, but for that's too much power for one or two idiots um, or three or four idiots. That's too much power. But we have to find ways to, to, to punish these guys, to get them out. I think everybody knows who it was. We had, with the German national team, we had something with Leroy Sané, Ilkay Gundogan. They had to, that was really big then. And they, at the end, they, they came by themselves to the police station and said, OK, uh, was now, we, we, here we are, was, we did it. So, and that's all just that they know. Yeah, you have to, if you do it, how it always is life, but you can make a mistake, but then you get the punishment. And for them, the punishment, I don't know what it will be. But I have to say, um, it's not that the coaches so should do that. Match officials, because we have, I take the players off and then somebody says, yeah, that was not that serious, so you lose the game. Our job is to win football games and we cannot make that. But if a whole stand would do it, then, it, then it's completely different. And going back to what you were saying about everyone has come back healthy from the internationals, you have the break. Fully, um, a full strength squad. Um, Virgil van Dijk was speaking, and he was talking about you know let's just go for it now and give him no more distractions. The run-ins here. Is it just about enjoying it and seeing where it gets you? Yeah, it's it's about enjoying it. Look, it's it's just something you really. Before a season starts, you have a lot of a lot of things you um, what you expect, what you think, what could happen, what you want to achieve. It's um, for a club like us, it's. Um, qualifying for the Champions League, um, that's the most important thing. And we, we said that before. Um, and we said and the, the, only, the only period in the whole season without any interruptions is this one. Because uh, now it's really until the final match day, go for it. And that's exactly what the situation you want to have, that you are still fighting for a lot of things. And we are fighting for two things, so that's brilliant. And we will do everything we can to be as successful as possible. I said, we created a basis, now we have to work with it. Yeah, and that's it. Enjoy, you can enjoy things in a different way. Enjoying like legs on the table and, and watching it, that's one thing. We have to, we, we enjoy it to work for it. We enjoy to fight for it. That's, that's from that point of view, yes, we should enjoy it 100%. Have we do all the TV at one side? Do you have one? Yeah. You have been seven games to, to go, four of them are at Anfield. How much does that give you an advantage given that you haven't lost in the league at Anfield since 2017 and all this? Yeah, two of these opponents are Tottenham and Chelsea. I say it's, it's, of course, home games for us are an advantage, but it's not an advantage to let us 
win a game with 60% or so because um, it's, yeah, we love playing at Anfield. It's a wonderful place and um, the boys are full of joy then, really. If they, we go out, dog out, everything is like we want to have the people on their toes, um, good, brilliant atmospheres. So that's all good, but we still respect the opponents, of course. It's not that we who are the other four games. It's um, Tottenham, Chelsea, Huddersfield and Wolves. So, yeah, they all have their own reasons to, to fight. For, for points and to fight for results, and that's what we respect. Um, I, I don't see a massive, a massive advantage or whatever. We have we had teams in the past; they were out, uh, away, pretty good. We were away, not too bad. Um, we played, yeah, we had a few draws away and, and lost at City. So that's all okay. We don't think about it. Next game is at home, so let's do that. Then we go to Southampton. Unfortunate, un unbelievable, difficult place. Was always became again because Ralph is really doing a brilliant job there. So there are so many things to think about, and only one thing of it is where we play. And of course, everyone says that well, to compete, you need to spend money. Tottenham didn't do that. With the, so what does that tell about Mauricio Pochettino that this side is always competing? They are in the semi-finals of the Champions League. Quarter. We are playing the quarter-final. Yeah. Are we in semi-final? Are they already in the semi-final? That would be great. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> I was a few days. I was a few days away. Maybe something happened. Um, of, again, there are so many positive things you could say about Mauricio. He's a fantastic manager, obviously. But the whole the whole club looks quite settled. To be honest, I think in the beginning of the season in England, in the country of transfers, you don't do transfers. That's really a big headline. Um, but with the team they had, I'm sure Maurizio would have had, would have loved to have here or there another uh, an add-on. But uh, the first line of up of Tottenham is difficult to improve, to be honest. So if they've been there if all together, then that's a that's a real football team. And from that point of view, if you have the right team together, you don't have to be too busy on the transfer market. It's um, it's only from outside that you always think, yeah, but you could be a little bit better here, a little bit better there. But the players you have, they can improve as well. So and then maybe they are better than the boy you 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 wanted to buy. So that's how it is. So I re respect their way a lot. And um, but. Um, at the end, we all have to make our own decisions, and um, I don't know exactly why they did it. But most of the time, if you don't make transfers, it's because of money. And if you watch the stadium, I know where the money is. So um, <laughs> um, they had to pay it by themselves, right? Do they pay it by themselves, or who pays it? Nobody knows. Yeah, probably. Eh? So yeah, you have to save a little bit of money for that, I would say, and that's what they did. Go all, all good. Yeah, I'm a big supporter of the team in America. This is my first time here. This weekend will be my first match in Anfield. Uh, the weather is always like this, by the way. Yeah, well, I was going to say, when I got the tickets earlier in the season, I didn't think this game was going to be as important as it has turned out to be. So I, I, is there anything I can do to help? <laughs> Probably not. Okay. Probably not, because we have to do it by ourselves. That's how it is. But we have a lot of people. You will, you will meet a lot of people. They want us. They want to help us at the weekend. So join them. There are a lot of good things you can do in that city before a game, and hopefully um, even more good things you can do after the game. So it depends a little bit on the result, to be honest. Um, and um, so enjoy the city. It's a nice one. James, as you say. Yeah, how are you feeling heading into the, the final seven games? Are you, are you excited? Are you I'm okay. I'm good. Uh, all good. I, I'm. I'm. I'm completely. I wanted to have this situation. I wanted to have that situation. That's and now we have it. So that's brilliant. And now we work. It's nothing to think about. I don't think back. I don't think too far ahead. It's. It's just we are in the situation. The boys came back. We trained. We prepared a session. We do the session. We are happy with the session or not that happy with us. Whatever happens. And then you. 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 You're going to games, and I know how difficult these games are. And now, in the moment, it's like people think about our situation. I got seven games; we have to win each all of them because City will not will win all of them. So that's how it is. And then you face Tottenham. So why should we give Tottenham an advantage and say, okay, look, we have to win. You only maybe you are happy with the point or whatever. I don't think they are. But it's just an open game before it starts, and that's what we have to make sure that we are really ready for that. Not going nuts. Not. Accepting that we that we will have problems in the football games, like we had at Fulham, like we had at Fulham, I, I, that would be big fun. Huh? If somebody would have in all living rooms, 
in the world where Liverpool fans sit and then uh, equalize on this wonderful goal of Ryan Babel. And what then happened in that moment, who thought then, yeah, uh, we will be champion at the end of the season. But these moments will be, will be there in the next seven games and hopefully in five Champions League games. So that's how it is. But you have to, you have to be ready to, to sort that. If you expect not having problems, then you will be really surprised. But if you know that you will have some, then you are prepared for that. So let's, let's face the problems and use the opportunities and fight for each yard on the pitch. Use each fiber of your body and go. That's it. And how big a result was that early in the season when you won at Tom? I know it was only five games in. Oh, away at Tottenham. The game before we lost there, four-one, right? So yeah. oh, proper strike there. So that um, no, it, it, Tottenham is difficult to play, yeah, in a way um, for sure as well. So yeah, it was a big one. It was an absolutely big one. Winning against a team like Tottenham on their own ground is um, really rare, and it felt good that day. Yeah. You have to, if you have to show that day in and day out, it's not that you show once that you can deal with it. You have to be ready for the next game again. We had to, it's two weeks ago when we start on Sunday. It's two, it's two weeks ago that we dealt. I really thought pretty well. Yes, at the end it was a penalty, but we dealt really well with it. I didn't see, any, I didn't see a massive drop of mood, body language, whatever, that was completely okay. The game is 95 minutes and as long as the ref doesn't whistle um, the final one, then um, yeah, you have a chance to change. And we know that we knew that before. It's not the first time that we that we scored late goals or whatever. But of course, in in this game, it was it was massive, absolutely massive. Felt brilliant. Um, and um, yeah, learn from your own experience is the best thing you can do in life. And of course, you need situations like that that it worked out at least once. That you and it's easier to believe the next time it can work again. Doesn't mean it will work again, but if you, yeah, it's easier to believe in. I would say their skills are similar important. Their attitude is um, very important. Their character is very important. Yes, but belief in something is makes it more likely to happen. One hundred percent. And yeah, but the problem is, I'm pretty sure Manchester City believes as well. So one will be disappointed at the end of the season. So that's how it is. But be, yeah, let's let's go for it. Nobody knows what will be at the 13th of May. Is it 13th or when? Yeah. So nobody knows that. But we try everything to make it a big day for us. Okay, final quick few questions. David, no? Okay, Neil, anything from you? No, good, okay. Uh, room one. Thank you. Thank you.